Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Quantum Leap Futures Morning Leap Session for Monday, January the 9th, 2017. My name is Doug McKay. I'm the founder of Quantum Leap Futures. Each morning we get together in these live go-to sessions to take a look at the market macro to micro, take a look at the structure of the market, then we drill down to our trade levels, our targets, and our four main hypotheses. We do create multiple hypotheses in order to have a plan in place for whatever the market throws at us. That way we don't have to think. We just have to look at what the market is doing and then execute on the plan, which is closest to what the market is showing us. Uh, nobody at Quantum Leap is a certified trading advisor. We are retail traders operating within a self-organized learning environment. Past performance is not indicative of future results. Any trades that you see in Quantum Leap are for education purposes only. Please trade your own due diligence, your own trade plan, and your own risk metrics. This is a subscription room. If you're interested in checking it out, send me an email at quantumleapfutures at gmail.com. There is no way website. There's no blog. This is not a commercial venture. We do everything live here in the go-to during the pre-market and then live trading and analysis during the course of the trading day. So let's take a look at the, uh, the uh, action on Monday. Monday, our main hypothesis was an open auction uh, just inside a range or just outside a range. Uh, then a rotation down into value, test the value area low. And then we were talking about the 57.75. 57.75 was our weekly critical mass. We said if they held that critical mass, then we'd have a, uh, a good probability that uh, it would kick in and uh, we would see capitulation from the sellers. Uh, we held value, rotated back up, tested the range high, failed the breakout, and then we came back and tested the VWAP and the midpoint, and then the buyer stepped in again. And then once we got the breakout, that's where we had the capitulation of the, uh, of the, uh, of the sellers based on critical mass, and then we saw uh, that uh, move to the double top to break the double top at 69.50, and we were targeting a new all-time high. And uh, that's exactly what they did. They got up to the all-time high and then basically just accepted that value, creating a double distribution and, uh, and an upper distribution that has a LVN here at 71. Um, the, the breakout wasn't that strong, and we put a double top in. Uh, so we've got a couple couple things that we've got to take a look at in terms of, uh, of structure. First of all, we've got a weak high at the all-time high, uh, but we pulled back. Now, we've got a couple repairs to do. You can see we've got, uh, if you look at the structure, uh, this is a market profile chart. Uh, time at price rather than volume at price. You know, we got up here and we, we created a nice distribution here, but did not get an excess uh, high. This is not a blow-off top. We were talking about looking for that blow-off top, and this has not happened yet. But we have repair work at 22.70 and 22.67, and our low overnight was 22.67. Uh, 75. So we're coming back into this repair area, and I'd be watching the 67, if we hold the 67, to have a more of a rotational day today as we do some repair and probably even get a possible inside day today. But if we do not hold the 67, then we're likely to make that bigger move back down to the uh, the microcomposite VPOC down here at uh, the 6450. So just some structural stuff that we've got to take a look at. Uh, but before we get uh, too deep, let's take a look at the news. Uh, there is uh, labor market conditions at 10 o'clock uh, and uh, Bank of Canada Business outlay, uh, Outlook Survey, and then Consumer Credit. Uh, so not a lot of news today. Just taking a look at the week. Uh, again, not a lot of news. You get Jolt's Jobs, Final Wholesale, uh, J Japanese Bond Auction tomorrow. And then uh, Wednesday, you've got uh, crude inventory, uh, crude inventory, crude oil inventory, and the 10-year bonds. Uh, Thursday... Uh, is really the first day of any uh, major uh, news, unemployment claims. Uh, you got a couple FOMC members speaking, 30-year uh, bond auction, natural gas, 
uh, and then you've got uh, Yellen speaking in the evening. This could offer some opportunity uh, on, uh, on the Globex session uh, for doing some Globex trading. And then on Friday, uh, we've got uh, PPI, core retail sales, and uh, uh, University of Michigan, and we also have another member speaking. Um, so not a ton of news this week, uh, but uh, more significant uh, later on in the week. So let's just take a uh, step back. I always like to start my day with a uh, simple candlestick chart. I'm looking uh, at uh, 9 EMA, 20 SMA. I'm looking for slope and separation. You guys must get tired hearing this. I'm looking for where it's being violated. And then I work my way down through the different time frames because I want to know where we are within the different time frames in terms of strength of trend. Uh, you can see that uh, beautiful upward trend challenged at the end of 15, beginning of 16, took it back, and then we've had a real nice, strong move except for this move right here, which was the election. And, uh, and we're just, uh, you know, trending up. Uh, you know, good slope, good separation on the monthly. On the weekly, we had that uh, double top that we took out. Uh, now we put in a new high. Uh, we're holding, you know, uh, in the upper distribution here. Uh, no real sign of any weakness coming in yet. Um, but, uh, you know, the trend is still up on the weekly. On the daily, same thing. Uh, we started to look like we were going to roll over, and then we took it back, and now we're starting to get slope and separation. It's not tremendous yet, but a move back to the 22.60 and a quarter would be the first place where we uh, would challenge uh, the trend. Uh, so the trend is still up. We're just uh, pausing here after making new highs, and this is part of the reasons why I think we're likely to have more of an inside day than anything. Uh, if we can hold that 67. Uh, going to the intraday, you see that uh, uh, we do have that double top at uh, 77. Uh, we did pull back and uh, we're uh, breaking down below the uh, the 9 EMA, a move to the, uh, uh, the uh, 20 SMA is going to take us up into that 22, down to the 2265.50 area, but I'm really looking at that 2264.50. Uh, so we are seeing some weakness uh, coming in, and most of this weakness came in, uh, you know, once the European session uh, happened. Going to the uh, one hour, you can see that we have the start of a downward trend. Uh, we do have a naked cross on here. You want to pay attention to these naked crosses at uh, 22.72 and a quarter on the one hour. <clears throat> but we do have uh, a start of a downward trend. Uh, going to the 30-minute. Same thing, we've got a naked cross right here at 73.75. Just writing these down myself. Uh, but we have good uh, prices paralleling the, the nine nicely, then it comes back and it fails off of the nine, the retest, and now we get continuation. So the trend is down on the uh, 30 minute. Uh, do we have any naked crosses down here? Nothing to look at. That's going to be a factor today. Going to the 15 minute, you can see that uh, we have good slope and separation. They tried to take it back on the 20. They're failing, uh, you know, uh, but we're losing some separation. But the trend looks like this looks more like a continuation uh, pattern to the downside. And uh, we're coming down to, we just make a new low. Uh, we have not made a new low yet, though. Uh, but we've just put in a week, uh, a week low at the 22.67.75 double bottom here now on the uh, on the 15 minute, and then on the five minute uh, we had a nice strong trend down. Then it looked like they were going to take it back, and then we've got uh, a strong move down. We've got a possible Fubar Mr. Sneaky setting up on the uh, on the five minute. Uh, uh, good volume spike here, moved away. Uh, possible inside bar. It's you know got another uh, few minutes before this sets up, but a move back to test the uh, the uh, nine EMA will take us back to the twenty two sixty nine. So just keep an eye on this little uh, pattern here. Uh, Taking a look at the structure, you can see that uh, I've include I've now uh, encapsul encapsulated, and this should actually go to here. Well, it keeps dropping off. Uh, 
we are still above value, uh, value area high uh, for the microcomposite is at 68, uh, value area low is at 49. Um, our three-day microcomposite VPOC, the value area is 67. This is why I'm watching that 67. Below 67 puts us inside of the longer time frame value and puts us into the three-day uh, uh, value area. And you can see that the three-day value uh, is 63.75, where the uh, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21 days, so three weeks, uh, uh, you know, the microcomposite VPOC is here at uh, 22.64.50. So if we can't stay in price discovery, there we need to come back and look for, uh, for buyers, uh, more buyers with conviction, and come back and likely come back and that's be a pretty decent trade down into the 64.50 to 63 area. The value area low is 57. It gets pretty blunt down here. Uh, we still have some repair work uh, to do down here. You can see that the three days has offered us a double distribution, which was created on the breakout day, but I really don't think this was a very strong breakout. Uh, personally, so I, you know, and with the double top, I doubt it's uh, it's it's over with. But uh, you know, if we can't, you know, if we can't find buyers in price discovery, then we got to come back into value and start uh, searching for uh, more buyers and, and advertising to the buyers lower. And how low that will be, don't know. But uh, you know, this pullback would uh, would certainly uh, you know uh, be within the realm of uh, the normal auction process. So take a look at uh, the overnight session. You can see that uh, we opened up uh, the week at 22.71 and a quarter. And you know, then we came back up into the value, into the uh, microcomposite epoch of the upper distribution of end of the day, sort of went sideways, tried to continue up and failed. Where the microcomposite, or where the VPOC was earlier uh, on the breakout, it did shift down on the close, but we got up to, to this area here at, uh, at the 75 and a quarter, and then that's where the uh, sellers stepped in and started rotating us down. And then once, you know, we got into the European session, they uh, accelerated that. And now we're trading in this lower distribution. We created a double distribution with the LVN at 72 and a quarter. And we've just put in a weak low. And we're in this thin area of the profile. And this is why I think that we're likely to have more of an inside day today, a balanced day, a pause day, whatever you want to call it, because we really didn't uh, uh, auction this area properly. I mean, we broke out and just went straight up and then held the LVN uh, right into the close. We didn't get any pullback. So uh, we could end up just, uh, you know, sitting here and chopping and repairing this thin area of the profile. This is a, this is a P-shaped profile. Uh, so this is, uh, uh, is structure that needs to be repaired. Um, the overnight VPOC did shift down. It was up here at the 73.50, and it did shift down uh, to the 69.75. So let's start moving our, uh, our levels over. We're likely to put in another lower uh, low uh, for the Globex, but right now at 67.75. I'll have to keep an eye on that. Uh, we still have 30 minutes to, uh, to go. And then our overnight high, 75 and a quarter. And then our VPOC is not likely to shift now unless we get back up into the 73s, but that's not likely to happen. Uh, 69.75. And that's right at our VWAP. And then we've got a note that we do have a LVN here at the 72. Uh, it's just above the LVN here of, uh, of 70.75. I'm going to use the 72. Uh, because it's the uh, it's the uh, most current, uh, but I'd be 
you know, I really have to use the slush zone from the 70, 75 to the 72. Uh, so I'm going to just kind of encapsulate both of them, uh, but just note that uh, 72 is an area that I want to see us get above for a move up into the upper distribution and the micro deposit VPOC and the overnight high. Um, that's basically all the information that I need other than if we put in another uh, lower low uh, for the Globex and likely do a make and break uh, if we still continue to chop around in this area. We have that single still at 67. Uh, that needs to be repaired. Uh, there's also one, what was the other one, 71? I think it was 71, right? 70. So likely to hit both these, uh, these targets, uh, you know, on the open and uh, get some, somewhat of an open auction uh, uh, in range, uh, open auction in range. All right, so levels. Obviously, the double top is going to be extremely important to us. We still have some measured moves. Um, the uh, value area low down here is another area I'm going to be paying attention to. Uh, I'm actually going to be targeting that in front of the 64, uh, you know, 50. That's going to be our main target below. You can use the, uh, the 63.75, but I prefer always to be a little bit more uh, conservative in my in my nature. This is going to be a tough area to trade right here simply because of the fact that it's so thin and that we've got the uh, single print at 70 and single print at 67 and we're likely to see some uh, some uh, open uh, chop when we uh, when we open the RTH session. Uh, and then above there's nothing really to guide me except for the uh, the measured moves that I uh, that I put in at 78, 75, uh, uh, 85, 50, and 89. Our 20 period ATR uh, is running at uh, 16, uh, 16 and a quarter. So our full session uh, uh, average true range 20 period is running at uh, at 16 and a quarter points. So based off the current overnight low of uh, 67.75. Our daily upside ATR target is up here at 22.84. Very capable of putting in new all-time highs based on the range. And off of the overnight high of 75 and a quarter, our uh, daily downside ATR is down here at 59. And uh, you know, so we have room to come down and uh, test the uh, lower distribution of the uh, value area on the 12-day uh, micro or the 21-day microcomposite VPOC. Um, other than that, uh, there's uh, the 54, and there's the, the 57 is what I'm going to be using. 57. That was where the microcomposite VPOC was, and big target down here at 52. Uh, and I'm going to be watching the 64 because if they come down the 64 and they do not uh, do not find buyers down here again, the likelihood is this pullback off of the double top, off of the all-time high at 77 is likely going to result in a move back down to the 52 area. We've missed it few times now and this is the next big target below so as long as that 77 stays intact I'm really looking for a pullback down into the 52 which would be a reasonable size pullback for the move up into the 77 and again that uh, this is not the blow off top I'm looking for so I fully expect that the 77 is going to get taken out it's just how far are they going to pull it back and this would be normal option to pull back on a week, on a false, what I consider to be a false breakout. Um, okay, so hypotheses. Uh, we're currently trading near the overnight low. We're likely to go even lower. We just put in a double. We just put in a, uh, a zipper measured move. So let's take a look at the zipper measured move um, and draw this up and take a look at it. So our zipper measured move. Look at that takes us down to the 63.75. What's the 63.75? 63.75 is the three-day most traded price and back into uh, to balance. Uh, the extended session on it, 
down into the 61. Um, so right now it appears that uh, we've got some weakness uh, coming in and we're likely to get continuation uh, to the downside. Uh, just watch, you know, watch how they handle the, uh, the 67 uh, area. And uh, did we just put in a new low? No, 67.75. I, I fully doubt that we're going to see 67.75 as our, our Globex low, but you never know. Uh, but I would be looking for that 67.75 to get taken out um, with this, uh, this zipper measured move. And this zipper measured move is valid until we get above uh, 75 and a quarter, which is uh, our overnight high. So as long as we hold the overnight high, look for them to come down and uh, go back into balance and... Uh, and, uh, you know, like I said, probably rotate. So my main hypothesis, my main hypothesis is an open auction in range, a move up into the 71 area, 72 area, up into the 74, but to fail to uh, take out the, uh, the all-time high and then start rotating us down and walking us down towards the 60. 463 area. And I've got to put this in at 63.75 now because that is a, a measured move. And and I'm, uh, I'd be looking for chop in this area with likely a, a, a late day probe down into the 2260 area. Um, so I'm not expecting a lot of range today, and I'm expecting a lot of chop and, and rotation. So uh, hypo one open auction in range, move up, uh, you know, fail to uh, take out the uh, uh, the all time high. Uh, I'm going to be watching this overnight high very closely. If we leave the overnight low alone coming into the uh, uh, the RTH session. Because if they fail to take it out, then there's a really strong case if we get back below the 71 to uh, get a nice move from 71 down into the 64, 63 area. Uh, hypo 2 is an open auction, uh, you know, in range, a move down to the 63, 75 or down to the 60 area. Find responsive buyers and start working our way up, but not taking us out of the uh, prior day range, ending up somewhere closing here in the upper distribution. Hypo 3 is an open auction in range, a move down to 63.75, find buyers and then work our way up, but this breaking, uh, Hypo 3 breaking the 77 and moving up and uh, taking us up into the 80s, the 2280s, and putting in a new all-time high and uh, and you know repairing this weak high that we have right now. Hypo four is an open auction uh, in range. Failure to get above seventy one or seventy two, so leaving the upper distribution alone, and then coming down into the sixty three, chopping here, and then failing and pushing down into this fifty two area and closing down and getting a breakout to the downside rather than the upside. So those are my uh, the, my main hypotheses. Just want to take a quick look at gold. You see that uh, gold is uh, finding some balance here. Why are you doing that? All right. See, sometimes my drawing tools don't work very well. All right. So value, uh, you know, balance is still down at the 1174. We are coming up. I want to watch this 82. 50 area. If we can get above the 8250 area, then I think we're going to go for uh, a breakout uh, on gold. Remember, you know, I said that you know once we had this breakout on Thursday, that we we're likely to pull back into balance 
and then balance in around the 74 to 78 area. Uh, and if we can hold that, then we'd make our next leg up. Uh, so, you know, we did, we are holding there, we are testing up into the uh, the value area for the three days, the value area high, we can get above that. I'm looking for a move up into the 1190 area, maybe even 1194.80. The next big target above, of course, is the 1200 and the 1209 and uh, 1215 area. But right now we're just uh, we're chopping around. Uh, it's pretty blunt on this uh, on this area of the uh, composite. Um, balances, you know, basically still between the 78 and the 74. If we can't hold the 72, then I'm looking for them to move back down towards this 57 again uh, and need to come back a little bit further to uh, pick up buyers. Anyway, <coughs> that's gold. Um, and uh, that's going to complete our pre-market session. As always, trade well, trade safe, and we'll catch you on the flip side. We'll watch this to see if they put in a, a new low here or leave that 67.75. I'm hoping they leave the 67.75 alone because it offers a much better trading opportunity, uh, you know, to get short into the, uh, the 67.75 break and a move down into those zipper uh, measured moves at uh, 63.75 and 61. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and close this down and then I'll reopen for uh, the RTH session.